starting we're here how's it going you guys welcome to tuesday night live prime time trivia tuesday july 17th 2018 how you guys doing welcome to the show we're getting ready for tr prime trivia. it's soup nazi trivia that's what it is tonight soup nazi trivia uh soup nazi in quotation marks don't want to get in trouble uh you know just having some fun here with some seinfeld stuff a few other things how you doing today Hope you're having a good day. I know some of you joined me earlier today on my 5 o'clock show. This is the 8 o'clock primetime trivia show. I do this every Tuesday and Thursday nights, Monday to Friday, 5 o'clock. I'm on talking about cruise ships, cruise ship holidays, and all kinds of stuff, ideas, news, trends, updates, and all that stuff. And, well, Tuesday, Thursday nights, we play trivia. We're having fun. Uh, welcome to the show. Welcome to the uh, to the deal. Uh, say hi if you're watching. Uh, let me know where you're watching me from. How are you doing? um all is well here creston hot 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 in 94 degrees here very warm day uh but we're uh, you know we're loving summer that's what it's all about thank you very much um folks are uh, signing in right here oh wonderful We've got a good crowd coming already um glad you're here um thanks thanks for supporting my channel as always i always thank you guys for that uh um 2370 odd subscribers and folks are going to my uh Redbubble store to get traveling Bruce Bruce merchandise. People are going to the the uh, the uh, Amazon site through my uh, link down here, the uh, the um, affiliate link I have. Uh, Prime Day today is the last day of Prime Day, and I thank you, any and all of you who picked up some items on the Amazon. Thank you very much for supporting my channel because there are finders fees coming my way. I'll know tomorrow, day after, what the tally was. I'll let you know. See how it worked out. Uh, thank you for that, and also thanks thanks to all of you who send me direct donations on my uh, PayPal account. Um, that is uh, on my homepage, kind of up here, where all those icons are. Uh, people go there; they send me a donation from time to time. Keeps me alive. I appreciate that very much, and I uh, thank each and every one of you, Peter Heckema, today. Uh, thank you for your donation today. I really appreciate that. Uh, it's not the first time he's done that either. I appreciate uh, his support very much. Uh, what else is going on? Um, Cruise-wise, not too much going on in the cruise world right at the moment. Um, new ships were announced in the last couple of weeks, and uh, LNG is the is the key word now, the key phrase. Uh, LNG, those symbols, those signals, or those, those initials, liquid natural gas. Uh, that's the direction cruise ships are heading. Uh, if you're going to, um, you want to go into port in in Europe. Um, you want to do Mediterranean cruises? You want to do um, Scandinavian countries? Uh, you better be burning uh, something as clean as liquid natural gas as opposed to the heavy fuel that's been used in the last 30 years. And uh, ships that don't have liquid natural gas, I would bet you in five years are going to start being uh, uninvited <laughs> to uh, ports. Uh, that is going to be an area that I think cruise, cruise lines and cruise liners are headed. We'll see how that all works out. But uh, yeah, clean is the... Clean is the word. Plastic is out. Plastic straws are out. Paper straws are in. Uh, plastic containers are out. Um, that kind of thing. Um, you know, lots more recycling and a uh, lot less polluting. So, good news there. I support that at 105, 110, 120%. Uh, who's here? I got Peter Heckema saying hi all way for a fun filled night of trivia. Brittany Lockwood is here. Hi, Brittany. Hi, Peter. And Jordan, say hey all. No soup trivia for you uh and jordan uh hey peter hey Brittany. uh richard c is saying hello everybody back uh back up to 90 in philly right now that's hot and jordan's saying hey richard uh, richard c hey and just shared info on australian trip with my ex-boss he may retire and do it you never know uh awesome richard uh how are all your plans going all sorted for the trip uh paul wilgus says hello richard c is in saying we have everything booked and most paid for funny the australian hotel didn't need a down payment that confused me yeah funny uh let's see here everyone's here richard c saying we'll be staying in the york by swiss bell hotel melody m is here hi melody hello everybody she's saying Tr uh, tracy uh, tracy dunlop is here hi bruce and all another hot and humid day in naples high of 96 fahrenheit put another order in on amazon maybe one more before night's over the more you look the more you find <laughs> laugh out loud let's not tell lil <laughs> let's keep that quiet <laughs> Fantastic, Tracy uh, and Jordan. Uh, nice, Richard. See, Dylan LaRue is here. Hey, everybody. How are y'all? Are you 110 and cloudy? He's in Henderson, Nevada. It's supposed to be 110. Unbelievable, Dylan. Brittany Lockwood, I ended up leaving the last show earlier than what I was uh, wanting. Computer was not cooperating. Uh, Brittany, I hope it all works out tonight. Uh, Sylvan Forrest is here. Uh, Sylvan, hi. Hi. Trivia. I did not really watch Seinfeld, but I won't, but I won't Google. 
<laughs> okay, buddy. Welcome, my man. Um, Debbie uh, Emmanuel, hello, everyone. Trivia time. Woo hi there, Debbie. Welcome back. Um, everyone's saying hi to everybody here. Let me just go through here. All the messages. Uh, Richard C. Wow, still don't like uh, still don't like liquid natural gas. Saw a small tank leak, and then spark hit it. Oh my! Like a bomb going off. Bad stuff. It vaporizes. Well, you know, I'm sure they've got systems. I don't know. I just you know, it's the way it's going. Uh, Brittany Lockwood. I initially came in like an hour early, left, and I came back just a few minutes before the show began. Hmm. That was on our last show, I guess. Uh, Wes Morrison, howdy. Hey, Wes, uh, Peter Heckema, can I can a ship be converted from oil to liquid natural gas? <clears throat> Good question, sir. Uh, probably uh, anything can be done if you have enough money. But, uh, uh, you know, I don't know about the uh, about the engines and I don't know about the uh, firing systems and the, um, the pumps. And uh, I don't know if you have enough dough. I guess you can do it all. Uh, but, uh, you know, some of these ships, um, the way they're built... Um, the kind of design not to be modified uh, down the road to an unbelievable extent, although I'll, well, we see videos all the time about ships getting cut in half and they put a section in the middle of it. You know, you can do that. I don't know. I don't, I wouldn't know. Uh, you kind of wonder if they ever decided to do a major renovation on the ship and they decided they could take a 100 section out, just take it right out, you know, cut it in both ends, and then put a brand new 150-foot section in. Could you do that? I guess with a, enough dough and enough imagination and the right design, maybe. Uh, I, but the money uh, gets to the point where it's just not worth modifying certain ships or modernizing certain ships to a, after a certain point in time. And you're better off to scrap it or use it the way it is and uh, and then kiss it goodbye. I don't know. Can't I can't answer that one. Um, Alice, uh, Alisa... Elisa is here. Hi, Elisa. Uh, hey, I made it to the show. Beautiful day in California. 53 days and counting. Splendor 2018. <laughs> right on. Cruz is coming up. Welcome back. Colorado. Uh, hey, everybody. Uh, hi, Colorado. How you doing, Martini? Colorado Martini. And Jordan. Uh, hey, Wes. Hey, Robert. Uh, hey, Elisa. Um, uh, welcome, Colorado. She's saying, and Jordan's welcoming you too, buddy. Uh, Brittany Lockwood, is it is working well now. No problems. All I, that I needed to do was to restart my computer a lot of folks do that on my show. Uh, we find that uh, sometimes I'll get a message. Someone will say, you know, you're lagging or you're, you know, I'm just not getting a good signal. And uh, half the audience will say, uh, reboot your computer, give it a try. And a lot of times that's the issue. Don't know why, don't know how, what can I say? Um, anyway, there you go. Uh, Colorado saying hi. Debbie saying hi. Everyone saying hi. hi. How are you? Fantastic, guys. Let's play some trivia tonight. Let's do some trivia here. Uh, I got a couple different uh, topics for you tonight. Uh, this should be fun. Um, I thought uh, I would start off with a uh, with a uh, it's kind of a boring topic, but I thought, what the hell, you know, soup Nazis coming, don't worry. Uh, potatoes. Tell me the countries that grow the most potatoes in the world. There are uh, twenty I got here. The top twenty potato growers. Who are they? What are these countries called? Uh, and let's see how well you. I got my pen handy to stroke off the list. Everyone, you get right. Eighty-one and a half, I think, million tons is the number one country. Uh, the bottom is three and a half million. And uh, let's see who grows potatoes. Uh, Brittany, I'm always up for some good uh, trivia questions. Paul Wilgus, uh, Poland. He's thinking po potatoes in Poland. Why not? Um, number seven in the world. Yeah, 8.7 million tons. Top 10 producer of potatoes is Poland. How about that? Um, uh, and Jordan, Ireland. I mean, the Irish have potatoes, right? I mean, you know, the Irish had the potato famine in the Middle Ages. So Ireland has got to be in the top uh, bunch here, don't you think? And uh, you, you, I'm looking. Uh, no, they're not in the top 20 at all. Ireland is not in the top 20. Uh, there might have been a time, uh, but in today's modern world with the modern technology and modern farming, Ireland doesn't grow enough potatoes to make the top 20. Maybe the land is too valuable for something else. Brittany Lockwood, the USA, Debbie Manuel is thinking the USA. Number five country, the United States of America, 100 and, uh, 100 and uh, what is that? Eight, oh, sorry, 18.3 million tons. Yeah, yeah, number five potato grower. On the planet, we love our fries, don't we? In North America, uh, Tracy Dunlap, Iran. Um, Iran is coming in number fifteen, four point two million tons. Lots of potatoes growing in Iran. Uh, Colorado had Ireland too. Y you know, damn good guess, I say. But uh, they didn't make this. They didn't make the cut this time. Brittany Lockwood and Ann Jordan are coming in almost simultaneously. Talking about the United Kingdom. What about the UK? Uh, let me look up the list. Yeah, number number twelve on the list is the UK at six million tons. They they did crack the top twenty. Uh, Ukraine, Richard C. Uh, yeah, number four in the world, uh, just ahead of the Americans, 
18.79 tons, number four potato grower of the Ukraine. Uh, Tracy Dunlop had the USA, Jan Jordan had the USA, Seakeeper had Iran, all correct. Brittany Lockwood, Brazil. Lots of land in Brazil, lots of population in Brazil. What about potatoes? Do they grow potatoes in Brazil to make the top 20? Just barely is the answer, number 19. 19th place, Brazil, 3.6 million tons. Not a huge grower of potatoes as far as their size of their country goes. Probably just not uh, the right geography, not the right uh, soil and weather. Richard C., Russia. What about Russia, Bruce? Yep, number three country in the world for potato growing is Russia, 21.1 million tons. The Russians, Tracy Dunlop, Canada. Bruce, you're in Canada. Do they grow potatoes in Canada? They do they grow potatoes in Canada. 14th biggest grower in the world, Canada, 4.4 million tons. We grow a lot of potatoes. Prince Edward Island, Prince Edward Island is famous for spuds, uh, but they're grown uh, across the country. Absolutely. Uh, Tracy Dunlap, uh, Mexico. Um, I'm looking for Mexico. I didn't think it was. No, it, it's not on there. Mexico, I think we're talking too warm, uh, maybe too dry. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of desert in Mexico, uh, high elevation perhaps. So Mexico doesn't make the top 20. They probably do grow some potatoes in Mexico, but not enough to crack the top 20. Brittany Lockwood, uh, China. Bruce, what about China? Yeah, number one country in the world for potatoes is China. China grows the most, 81 and a half million tons. Um, the, the Russians are 21.1. They're in third place. Ukraine at 18 million, USA at 18 million. So uh, yeah, 81 million tons. That's a big lead over everybody. Uh, China does grow by far the most potatoes on the on the planet. Uh, Peter Heckema is thinking about Germany because Germany they love their spuds. I mean, refried potatoes and bratwurst and sauerkraut and uh, red cabbage. Oh my God, what a meal that is! I'm getting hungry. I just ate. Number six grower in the world, Germany, 10.2 million tons, just behind the United States at 18 million. Uh, yeah, a lot of potatoes growing in uh, Germany and have been for years and years and years. Uh, Melody M is thinking about Sweden. Is Sweden a uh, potato grower, uh, and will they make the top 20? Uh, they probably are a potato grower, but they don't make the top 20 in volume, unfortunately. Uh, Greenland? Uh, no, Brittany, uh, we can't, uh, can't accept Greenland as an answer. Greenland is actually a territory owned by another country, if you know what that country is. But don't Google it. Uh, you might be all right. Peter Heckema. France, um, you know, they have those uh, French fries, uh, <laughs> or those called now, those are called freedom fries for a while in the United States. We call them freedom files, right? The folks in France grow a lot of potatoes. They really do. Uh, they're 10th place overall, 7.2 million tons. The French grow a lot of potatoes. They love their potatoes, and uh, so do we. Uh, Peter Heckema, the United Kingdom, we got it. Robert Brandt, Russia, we got it. Tracy came in with uh, Germany, we got it. Peter Heckema, Poland, we got it. Brittany Lockwood, uh, Brittany's thinking South Korea as another guess. Uh, Brittany, uh, no, South Korea does not uh, rank in the top 20 for uh, potato growing. Tracy has China, we have it already. Peter Heckema is wondering about Peru, though. He's guessing Peru. Uh, yeah, number 16, the 16th largest grower of potatoes in the world, Peru, 3.8 million tons. Uh, Richard C., Burkina, Burkina Faso. Uh, no. <laughs> Sorry. Tina Holt, uh, Canada, being that she's from Toronto. Uh, Tina, we've already had Canada guest. Canada came in at number uh, 14 uh, overall. The West Morrison, Russia, we have it. Peter Hekema now guessing the country of Turkey. Uh, the country of Turkey comes in 13th place for potato growing, four and a half million tons. They grow, they grow potatoes there. And Jordan is thinking about Australia. What about Australia, Bruce? Down under. Uh, no, Australia does not crack the top 20. How about that? Uh, Idaho, uh, Elisa, um, I love the guests. Idaho, because, uh, you know, Idaho potatoes. <clears throat> but I got to tell you, I'm looking for a country, not a state. Um, now, Idaho is inside the United States of America. It's only three miles south of my house. It's just down here because I'm at Creston. The border's right over here. Uh, they make great potatoes in Idaho, and Idaho contributes mightily to the United States overall total of potato growing, but the USA is the correct answer and they've already it's already been guessed. So Idaho has already been guessed through the USA. Fast food land, uh, Robert Brandt is coming in at. Uh, that's a damn fine guess on your part. <laughs> not gonna work. Uh, Alisa, USA, we have it. Uh, Richard C, thinking about Cuba. Now, uh, Cuba is not in the top 
20 in the world for potato growing. Uh, New Zealand, Brittany Lockwood is thinking about, though. Uh, New Zealand does not rank. Now, let me tell you the countries you got, and I'll help you out here a little bit. China is number one. Russia, Ukraine, USA, Germany, Poland make up the next uh, seven, but we have number two missing. We're looking for the number two country. I'm looking for number eight, number nine. I've got France at 10. I'm missing number 11. I've got the UK at 12. Turkey is 13th. Canada, 14th. Iran, 15th. Peru, 16th. I'm looking for 17, 18. I've got 19, which is Brazil. I need number 20. Now, number 20 uh, owns the uh, territory of Greenland. So my gal, uh, my gal, Brittany, she guessed Greenland a little while ago. I told her, if you could tell me the country that actually is the owner of Greenland, because Greenland is a protectorate, you'll get one of these. And it's number 20 on this list. Um, anyway, I'm looking for some countries in uh, Asia and uh, – I'm looking for um, Africa and Europe. So I'm looking for a little of everything here. Uh, Peru was guest. China we have already. Russia we have already. Uh, Melody and Peter Heckham are coming in right in here with India. And that is the number two grower of potatoes in the world. India, 65 million. Uh, or is that right, Bruce? Or am I reading that wrong? No, 36 million. Excuse me. 36 million tons behind China at 81 million, number one. 81 million down to 36 then 21 million for Russia. So we now have the top seven in a row. Uh, India was one of the biggies. Uh, Sweden, Nina is guessing her home country, Sweden, already been guessed and isn't in the top 20. Republic of Kir 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 Kiribati, no, sorry, Sea Keeper, not working for us. Uh, Brittany, Argentina. Uh, Brittany is trying Argentina here. Uh, no, it's not um, not on the list. No, uh, Tom Henry, Australia, we've tried already. And Jordan, hey, Nina. Seakeeper, Peru, uh, we just uh, did Peru, 16th overall. Uh, Tom Henry, make Tokyo. <laughs> Any way to squeeze Tokyo in on an answer, we're trying. Uh, sorry, uh, Brittany Lockwood, North Korea, no. Nope. Um, Elisa, Canada, we have already. Debbie Manuel, I saw that, Thomas. She's laughing out loud. She caught you. Brittany uh, Lockwood is thinking about Hungary um, in uh, Europe. The country of Hungary, no, nope, they're not in the top 20 for potato. West Morrison, Belgium. Yes, Belgium is in the top 20. They're at number 20. Uh, absolutely. Um, and now I have a guess from Seakeeper at Denmark. And now I'm guessing my own uh, my own uh, knowledge here because I'm trying to remember, is it, isn't it it Denmark that owns Green, Greenland? It's not Belgium. I was mistaken, I believe. It is Greenland. Uh, it, is, uh, it, is, um, uh, it is Denmark. And I have to apologize. If, if Seakeeper, if you were guessing Denmark because I gave the tip, about the uh, Greenland as a territory. If you guess the, the mother country, you'd be right. You got the right guess for who owns Greenland, <laughs> but they're not in the top 20. It's Belgium. <laughs> for some reason, I thought Belgium owned Greenland, but they didn't. As soon as I saw the, as soon as this, you typed in Denmark, I went, oh, wait a minute. I think Denmark owns Greenland. So there you go, or at least administers it. Brittany Lockwood, I, I do not Google during the shows, but I Google all the time for all kinds of things. I bet you do. You are of that age. And good on you, darling. Uh, and thank you for uh, for not Googling during the quizzes. Uh, you really just trying to tell everybody else, which is great. Elisa uh, was trying China for potato growing, number one country. We've already had a guest. Tom Henry, how about Saudi Arabia, Bruce? Do they grow potatoes? No, too much desert. Uh, they don't do it. I'm looking for uh, Asia, countries in Asia, Africa, and a European country. Uh, let's see what we have here. Uh, <laughs> laugh out loud, Thomas and Jordan. Uh, Elisa is thinking Bangladesh. Uh, no. Nope. Although I would have thought Bangladesh because they could sure use all the food they can get. Uh, actually, uh, let me backtrack a little bit here a second. Hi, Elisa. How you doing? I see you're guessing Bangladesh. Correct answer. Number eight on the list is Bangladesh. I don't even know why I looked over that. 7.9 million tons. Great answer, uh, Elisa. I never make a mistake. Sylvia, hi, Bruce and everyone. Hi, Sylvia. Debbie Manuel. Hi, Sylvia. Br Brittany Lockwood is thinking Iraq. What about Iraq? War-torn Iraq, nope, they just haven't got enough farmland back up and running yet, and I'm not sure if they're known for potatoes anyway. Uh, Celia is thinking, they're saying, hi, Debbie, and going with India, we already have it. Brittany Lockwood, Indonesia is a, is a guess. Big country uh, in Asia, but not on the list here uh, for potatoes, no. Belarus, Richard C., Belarus, uh, uh, yes, number nine is Belarus at 7.8 million tons. Good guess. Denmark, Tom Henry, we just did it. Uh, Pakistan, Brittany Lockwood. Uh, is coming in with Pakistan. No, Pakistan is not in this, uh, not in this list at all. Uh, let's see, North Korea. No, Romania. Richard C. Uh, Romania. No, I need one European country, one African country, maybe two African countries. Um, 
South Korea, South Africa are two guesses coming back to back. Uh, South Africa for an African country didn't make it. Bangladesh, no. Hungary, no. Afghanistan, no. Norway, no. Lithuania, no. Um, I'm looking for a country very close to Belgium. Uh, I'm looking for a country uh, that is in uh, is in Africa, but on the Mediterranean coast. Uh, let's see here. Um, hey, Sylvia uh, and Jordan Singh. Uh, UAE, uh, no, United Arab Emirates, not known for potato growing. Richard C. Uzbekistan, no, sir. Uh, Robert Brandt, how about Chile? No, uh, Chile did not make this this list. Uh, Netherlands, Sea Keepers going to Netherlands, yeah. Netherlands came in 11th place, uh, 6.8 million tons, just ahead of the UK. You now have everyone up to the first 16. The first 16 are all covered. Uh, I only have 17 and 18 left. Both, I believe, are in Africa. Uh, Richard C. is coming in with Egypt, and he's correct. That is the country with a Mediterranean coastline, 3.6 million uh, pounds, um, 3.6 million tons, excuse me, of potatoes grown in Egypt. Uh, you would think with all the desert, they couldn't grow potatoes, but they do. Um, let's see, Uganda, no. Um, Switzerland, no. Kazakhstan, no. Nigeria, no. South Africa, no. Uh, Australia, Nigeria, Singapore, Morocco, Netherlands, all those guesses are not going to work on this last one. Kenya, Algeria, Lebanon, and Monaco, no. Um, the country I'm looking for starts with the letter M, ends in the letter I, I believe it's in Africa. Um, M for the first letter, I for the last letter, growing potatoes. Uh, we hardly mention the con this country's name. If you've ever mentioned in your lifetime, it, it would be shocking because I've Never mentioned this country in my daily conversation. Algeria, Kenya, Lebanon, Monaco, uh, Haiyan uh, from Sylvia, um, Maui, Mali, uh, Maui, and Mali. Is, Maui is in Hawaii. <laughs> Mali um, is. Uh, I don't think that's African. Mali, uh, Mali is Mali. Uh, what am I thinking about Mali? Why am I thinking something else for Mali? But you're very close. Uh, it's Malawi. M A L, there we go. Sylvia has it. Malawi is the name of the country. 17th place country. I mean, which one of us has Malawi in our everyday uh, vocabulary? I mean, I don't know. How are those spuds from Malawi tasting there, Bruce? Oh, they're great. I love them. Deep fried. Love it. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, okay, here's the final, the final list for potato growers China, number one. Uh, India, Russia, Ukraine, USA, number five. Germany, Poland, Bangladesh, Belarus, France, Netherlands, UK, Turkey, Canada, Iran, and the, the bottom five on this list from 16th to 20th place, Peru, Malawi, Egypt, Brazil, and Belgium. Those are your potato growers. How about that? Uh, and we go right from potatoes, we go right into vodka because I thought, you know, what, what do you make vodka from? You distilled potatoes. So I thought we'll go right into vodka, and I thought I would ask you guys right off the get-go, Tell me the countries that export the most vodka. Who exports vodka around the world? What countries? And let's see how you're doing. I can tell you how many dollars worth of vodka is exported by these countries because I have it in dollar terms. There are 15 countries that I have as exporters of vodka. Now, you might want to put one and one together and figure, well, whoever grows the stuff, maybe they make the stuff. But that might not be always, that might always be the case. So we'll see how this kind of comes in here. Uh, here come the uh, the uh, answers right now. Paul Wilgus, right off the get-go, is thinking Poland right now because they grow a bunch of stuff. And you know what? You're right. Poland is the number five exporter of vodka in the world. 162 million bucks worth of uh, vodka leaves Poland every year. I don't know where that number comes from. I don't know if that's the uh, the price the country sets for the stuff or if that's what it sells for in the countries where it goes to. I have no idea. But anyway, it's a consistent number. Fifth overall, Poland, very well done. Brittany Lockwood, she's thinking, is Mexico in the vodka exporting business? Uh, Mexico is certainly in the tequila exporting business. I can imagine that. Uh, but Mexico does not make the cut when it comes to producing, um, uh, exporting vodka. They're not in the top 20 for growing potatoes either. So that kind of works there. Okay, uh, Debbie Manuel and Richard C. and Nina Frank and Wendy McCullough and Tracy Dunlop and Ann Jordan, and Alisa, and anyone else, uh, almost everybody guessed Russia. And I say, well done, you guys. Uh, of course, Russia. They're the number four exporter of vodka. They're not the number one. They're number four exporter of vodka. $235 million leaves uh, comes into Russia's coffers for vodka sales, but they're not in the top three. Isn't that something? Jim Thomas, he's thinking France. 
the home of wine champagne. Number two country for vodka exports is France. It's incredible. Uh, you just I just wouldn't think of that as uh, that France would be number two's most biggest exporter of vodka it would be France. Uh, really? It is. Yeah. Uh, Nina had much. OK, uh, let's see here. Uh, Paul Wilgus, he's thinking the United States of America. So is Robert Grant. So is Richard C. They're coming in with the good old USA. Well, the United States of America comes in here in 11th place. $72 million worth of exports. 11th. They're not a big player in the vodka export business. Uh, Brittany Lockwood is going with Germany. Uh, Germany is number seven. $120 million worth of vodka leaves Germany every year. Yep. Uh, Sylvia had Russia as well. Uh, Richard had USA. Robert had France as well. Tracy had the USA. Uh, and Jordan is coming in with Australia. Um, I'm looking for Australia. And you know what? They don't grow potatoes in any big amount, and they don't export vodka either. No, Australians are not known for vodka exports. Um, Peter Hekema, Finland. What about Finland, Bruce? Um, yeah, number nine. Uh, Finland is the ninth largest exporter of vodka in the world. $90 million worth. I know the brand Finlandia. My dad used to enjoy that. Uh, Robert Brandt, Poland. Uh, that was our first guess. Uh, that came in number five. Um, Tom Henry had Finland as well. Brittany Lockwood, Brazil. What about Brazil, Bruce? Does Brazil export uh, vodka? Uh, no. Brazil is uh, the 19th largest potato grower in the world, but... Um, it's, I guess it's not for vodka production and export. It uh, might be for local consumption of vodka, or maybe they just make French fries with it and have baked potato with their steaks. But uh, Brazilians are not known for vodka exportation. Tom Henry had Finland as well. Robert Brandt is coming in with Sweden. Uh, let me tell you a little story. Uh, the number one country for vodka export is Sweden. How about that? The Swedes make an awful lot of vodka and sell an awful lot of vodka and 579 million dollars worth that's over half a billion a year in vodka exports from sweden is it any wonder they don't have they they do have such a high standard of living over there they're bringing all this cash in from overseas from all their vodka fans that's incredible i, I was shocked when i did this quiz i couldn't believe it sylvia swan is uh, sylvia is wondering about uh, the country of turkey for vodka exports, no. Um, predominantly Muslim country, they're probably not known for vodka exports or alcohol exports for any great extent either. Elisa has Russia. We already have that. A Tracy Dunlop of the United Kingdom. Number three, UK, 329 million in exports in vodka. So the top five, we've got Sweden, France, the UK, Russia, and Poland. Those are the top five. We're missing number six. We have Germany, number seven. Finland was number nine. USA was number 11. So I need a few more countries yet. Uh, UK, USA, Ireland. Brittany Lockwood is thinking about Ireland. Uh, didn't make the cut. No. Uh, what about Mali uh, from Richard C? Uh, no. Uh, Malawi, Peter Hekema. You know, they grow potatoes in Hull, Malawi, Bruce. Uh, no, Malawi is not known for vodka exportation. Um, Tom Henry, ice. Are you talking about Iceland? Uh, you know, I'm kind of curious. And Jordan, Canada. And Jordan, uh, Canada is the 15th largest exporter of vodka, only 24 million bucks a year. Hardly any goes out of Canada. I guess we drink it all. By the way, Iceland is not on the list, if anybody's curious. Uh, Poland, we have. Ukraine, we got. Uh, no, we don't have. We have for Ukraine right now. Ukraine, number eight, $100 million worth of vodka out of the Ukraine. Ukraine is the fourth largest grower of potatoes. They could sure make a lot more vodka than this. But they are um, the eighth largest exporter of vodka globally. Uh, Tom Henry had Iceland, and it, it didn't make it didn't make the cut. Elisa is thinking Asia. Forget the one country. Let's just go all in with every country in Asia, Bruce. Make it easy on me. Sorry, Elisa, I can't do that for you. <laughs> you got to be specific. Peter Heckham had Iceland too. Brittany of uh, South Africa is her guess. Uh, nope, South Africa does not make the cut. Norway from Seakeeper. Uh, Norway. Uh, da -da, da -da, da -da. Nope. Norway did not make the top 15. Brittany also had Norway. Uh, Lisa Garcia, Netherlands. She went in with the Netherlands. Number six. You got it. Sixth largest country for vodka exports. The Netherlands. $140 million worth. Well done. Uh, Richard C. What about Japan? Is Japan known for vodka exports? Nope. They're probably known for vodka imports, but not exports. Sweden, Seakeeper, we already have it. Uh, Romania, Sylvia, wondering about Romania. Nope, not on the list. 
Uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, where was I here? Oh, here we go. Uh, Wendy uh, McCullough, China. Uh, China is not an exporter of vodka. They grow the most potatoes. But they don't. Uh, they're not in the top fifteen for vodka exports uh, at this time. They're probably using it for something called food. <laughs> uh, Tracy Dunlop, Canada. We have Nina Frank, Iran. Um, no, the Iranians are not known for alcohol production. Um, Peter Hekema, Belarus. Uh, no, yes, 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 yes. That is, I just saw it. Fourteenth. They just made the cut. Fourteenth largest producer or, or exporter of vodka is Belarus, thirty-five million a year, uh, just ahead of Canada. Uh, Brittany Lockwood, Italy. Yep, number 13th country. Italy, $43 million a year. I got two left to go. One in Europe, one in Asia, and we got this guy done. Um, Germany, we've had already. Brittany tried Canada. Brittany, New Zealand, no. United Kingdom, we've done. Sweden, we have. China, we have. India, we tried, didn't go. Uh, most modern vodka isn't potato-based. And Robert, thank you for that info. Uh, uh, I really don't know. And kind of don't care but thank you because that actually is a valid thing to say uh thank you very much sir and you would know because you's be in that biz you know that's a britney lockwood hungry uh no uh britney no i'm looking for a country in europe for sure but it's not hungry i'm looking for a country in asia um uh to jim thomas is saying it's grain i believe you're right guys uh and jordan awesome nina uh peter heckema norway no uh richard c e egypt no robert brand i wonder i wonder is the keyword is exporter and not producer the keyword is exporter not producer is correct sir that is right not the one who makes it who exports most of this stuff uh yes um west morrison belgium belgium no uh tracy had belgium too latvia from elisa uh, latvia is number 10 on the list that is the european country i'm looking for 85 million in exports one country left in asia that is an exporter of, of vodka i couldn't believe when i saw this i could not believe this country made this list uh robert what is the main ingredient tom henry wants to know Brittany is going with denmark robert brandt majority is wheat based as jim thomas guessed very well done thailand no sylvia that's not it india no turkey no spain no portugal no estonia no uh jim thomas i drink enough of it i should know what it's made of <laughs> i looked it up at one point in time uh from jim thomas the one country is in asia and it's a small country and this is why i couldn't believe it i i couldn't believe this uh, small country in asia is 14th on the uh, uh, 12th on the list excuse me 12th largest exporter of vodka I, I can't figure out how they do it um I, I couldn't figure it out uh i can tell you right now they don't grow the they don't grow the ingredients uh, they don't they do not grow whatever ingredients they need to make their vodka they don't grow them yet they're known for vodka exports of oh, oh, 12th largest in the world um I couldn't tell you a brand name of their vodka, though. I tell you. Indonesia? No, that's not a small country. That's a big country. Uh, Sri Lanka? Uh, small, but smaller than that. Thailand? Way smaller than Thailand. I mean, way smaller than Thailand. Uh, we're talking a, a, a country that is smaller than Vietnam. Uh, I just saw Vietnam pop up. Um, uh, Brittany, I, I do not drink a lick of alcohol, but I love my caffeinated, uh, caffeinated drinks. Right on, Brittany. Uh, Tracy Dunlap, Taiwan, smaller than Taiwan. And <laughs> that's small. Uh, yeah. Burma, uh, no, uh, Myanmar, that's Myanmar. But um, not too far away from there. Uh, Burkina Faso, sorry, Richard. No, you, I know you're looking for that answer. Sometime he's going to, one of these days, Bruce is going to put a trivia question up there where Burkina Faso is coming in. Uh, I think I've done it once, maybe. Uh, Wendy McCullough, Laos and Sea Keeper Laos. It's not Laos, uh, smaller than Laos, much smaller. Uh, this this is a country that uh, really has no farmland. I can tell you right now, this country doesn't have a tractor. Uh, this should be binging off a couple of brains out there. Some of you folks might remember this answer. No tractor in this country uh, from before. Aired it. Wes got it. Wes Morrison. I can't slip this one past you. Singapore. Yeah. I can't believe it. Singapore is the 12th largest exporter of vodka in the world. How, how can that be? Well, they import everything. They have to. They got to import the bottles. They got to import the or import the spuds. Whatever they're importing to make the vodka, they're importing it. They're making it in Singapore and exporting it. I couldn't believe it. Uh, uh, I, I, I couldn't understand. All right. Uh, let's have some Super Nazi trivia. <laughs> I love this. Uh, I was thinking of you, Nina, in Sweden. Uh, I know how much you enjoyed my, uh, my uh, Seinfeld uh, trivia quiz a while back. 
Well, I got one for you here. I uh, got a couple of Seinfeld uh, trivia quizzes tonight, but this is the first one. The Soup Nazi uh, Seinfeld quiz. Uh, tell me there are seven correct answers to this one. Tell me the kind of soup you could order from the Soup Nazi. If you got in the line, what kind of soup would you order from this guy? He had seven kinds of soup. What are they? And uh, let's see how we do on this one. Uh, the Soup Nazi soups on Seinfeld. Uh, I remember when he was in the trial on the last episode, he was brought in as a character witness against them. And the, uh, the uh, prosecutor said to him, what's your name? And he, spelled his, he said his name. And the uh, guy said, uh, would you mind spelling that for me? And he said, no. Next question. He would not spell his name, uh, Kassan something or something Kassan or something. He wouldn't spell it. No, next question. <laughs> First guess out of the box, Richard C., Brittany Lockwood are coming in with tomato. No, he did not make tomato soup. The soup Nazi did not offer tomato. Paul Wilgus is thinking potato soup. Uh, no, he did not offer potato soup either. Uh, tomato soup, potato soup is coming in. Potato soup is coming in. Everyone's going with the potato tonight. No. But here's Nina Frank with Mulligatawny. Ah, yes. Uh, Mulligatawny is one of the seven soups he was offering at his uh, soup stand in New York. Mulligatawny. I love the name of that soup. Um, Tracy Dunlop, potato. Sorry. Brittany Lockwood, vegetable. Sorry. No, not vegetable. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Lima, uh, from Nina Frank, Lima, Lima bean soup. Uh, no, I don't have Lima as a correct answer. Peter Heckham, I had Mulligatani. I know the spelling of it. It's got to be a nightmare for you guys. Uh, Sylvia is thinking chicken. How about chicken soup? <laughs> I didn't do chicken. Uh, let's see. A uh, pea, uh, Richard C. How about pea soup? No, no. Uh, Wendy McCullough, potato bisque, potato bisque. That's a little fancier. You know, but no, he didn't have a potato bisque. He had another kind of bisque. I'm giving you a hint there already. Um, Tom Henry broccoli? Uh, nope, I didn't have a broccoli soup. Uh, Tracy Dunlop with vegetable? No. Brittany Lockwood gumbo? Uh, no, didn't have a gumbo. Um, Nina Frank is guessing mushroom. Uh, there is a mushroom soup. It's wild mushroom. I'll give you that one. He was offering mulligatani and wild mushroom. That's two of them for sure. Peter Heckham, a French onion. Uh, nope, he didn't offer French onion soup. Uh, jambalaya from Peter Heckham. Jambalaya. Well, that's uh, Newman uh, ordered that soup. He was so happy when he got it. It is one of the brands. Newman opened the bag, smelled it. Jambalaya and went running home to eat it. Yes. <laughs> Richard C., a bean soup, a split pea from Peter Heckema. They're wondering about that. Uh, nope, neither. Uh, Sylvia, I have Hulu. I will have to watch. you got to watch the episode with the soup, Nancy, uh, to see all the soups. Uh, Peter Heckema, turkey chili. Yes, turkey chili soup. He offered turkey chili. <laughs> I was just thinking today that when they were writing this episode, it would be Jerry Seinfeld, and it would be, um, uh, you know, it would be the guy, uh, the George Costanza in real life. Uh, you think I can remember? I can't remember names on the spot sometimes. Can't do it. Uh, it will come back to me. And they're sitting in a room going, what kind of what kind of soups would this guy make? <laughs> turkey chili. I want turkey chili. And they would be guffawing all night long. I'm sure they were laughing their butts off. Junior Mint Soup from Tom Henry. I love that one, Tommy. <laughs> they're delicious and they're refreshing. Junior Mints, they're, they're refreshing. Jerry, how could you not want one? No, sorry, Tom Henry. No Junior Mint Soup. <laughs> Jim Thomas. Cabbage Soup. No, uh, the cabbage did not make it into the cut. Uh, crab Bisque from Nina Frank. Yes, Nina Frank. Crab Bisque Soup. He made crab bisque. Um, lobster bisque, Paul William, Paul Willigas is wondering about lobster bisque. No, I uh, didn't make the lobster. He made the crab bisque. Um, <laughs> uh, Seakeeper also had lobster. Uh, Wendy McCullough, I can't remember what what bisque, laughing out loud. 
Um, Tracy Dunlap, a lobster bisque, Wendy McCullough, lobster bisque, and uh, Peter Heckham, a crab bisque are all coming in with it. Brittany Lockwood, jambalaya is not a soup, by the way, but it was made for the show by the soup Nazi, and so it fits this quiz. Oh, Sylvia Newman laughing out loud. Uh, sea Keeper, pea soup. Nope, he didn't make pea soup on the episode. Shrimp and corn, uh, Brittany is thinking. No, not shrimp and corn. Sorry. Uh, Nina Frank, da Larry David, thank you so much. Yeah, Larry David and Jerry Seinfeld are sitting in an office in a room. I don't know where they're sitting. They're coming up with the scripts for this stuff, and they're thinking, well, we need some names of soups. Okay. <laughs> Two grown men making millions of dollars a year coming up. We got to come up with some soup names for our show, and we just can't have like chicken noodle. I mean, you know, we need we got we got a soup Nazi here. He's intense. <laughs> I love it. Larry David, genius, comic genius, and Jordan Chowder. What about Chowder? They he did offer a Chowder. What kind? He had a Chowder. Uh, Brittany Lockwood, clam chowder? No, he didn't offer a clam chowder. Um, Richard C. Bula base. Something Bula base. Uh, I have nothing there. Brittany Lockwood, I have to guess some of my favorites. Peter Heckham, a sweet potato? Uh, no. Wendy Wet McCullough, borscht? No. Um, uh, just forget it, let it Just forget it, let it go. Richard C. <laughs> just forget it, let it go. Yes, George Costanza is ordering his soup and he didn't get a bun and he wanted a bun. And Jerry is looking at it going, forget it, just forget about it, let it go. And he said, the soup Nazi says, You want a, you want bread? Yeah, I'd like some bread. $3. He wants extra three dollars. Three dollars, George says. And then the soup Nazi points at his assistant and she grabs the soup away from George and kicks him out. No soup for you. <laughs> just forget about it, let it go. <laughs> Sylvia Swan, meatloaf, no. Uh, Robert Brand, Cheeto soup, a.k.a. Trump Delight soup. No, <laughs> sorry. Peter Eckema, mushroom barley, no. Laughing out loud, Robert is laughing out loud. Paul Wilgus is laughing out loud. Uh, Peter Eckema, black bean, no, no, no. It is, um, I'm giving them away. The uh, cold, cold crab chowder. I, I don't know where we, maybe that was written on a chalkboard behind him or something. Cold crab chowder. What kind of soup is that? And the last one was cold cucumber, cold cucumber soup. I don't know. Oh, my gosh. I love that episode. And when when uh, darling Elaine Bennis comes into that show at the end of the show to confront the soup that she has his rep res recipes in her hand. And he says, I, I told you you're not getting any soup from me. And she says, soup? Why would I want soup? I don't need your soup. I can make my own soup. And she's reeling off the ingredients to his cherished recipes. <laughs> Great episode. You got to watch it. I love that show. Black bean, red bean, uh, <laughs> vichy <-soi. laughs> The guesses keep coming in. All right. I've got another one for you. Um, I've got um, one more. I got two more, two more quizzes for you. I'm going to give you this one first. It's a TV quiz. And I'm going back to Seinfeld for the last one of the night. Uh, this one here, um, you got to tell me. This should be fun. You tell me the longest running television sitcoms in television history. The longest show has been on for 28 straight years. The shortest uh, is a tie for ninth, and there are many um, in total. Let's see here. Two, four, six, eight, ten. <sighs> 36 shows make this list of the longest running TV sitcoms in US television history. Tell me the names of these US television sitcoms. These are comedy shows. Uh, Richard C., sorry, Bonanza is a damn good answer. It's one of the winners for the longest running TV show, but it's not a sitcom. As funny as Haas was, it doesn't count as a sitcom. Uh, Brittany Lockwood, she's thinking Friends. And I can understand why, because you watch Friends, or you've watched it when you were a kid, and you've seen the reruns for years and years and years. And it is one of the longest-running shows on television. 
Uh, ten straight years it ran on TV. It's in the middle of the pack, though. It's not one of the top longest, but it's up there. Tom Henry, The Simpsons, number one all time, 28 seasons. The Simpsons makes sense because unlike The Friends, Friends got 10 years older during the run of the show because they only make 20 some odd uh, episodes a year and then they have their summer hiatus. Well, our friends on Friends got old, 10 years older over the run of the show. The Simpsons, they look the same. <laughs> they look the same. That's a cartoon. You can run it forever, but with human beings, you got a problem there. Uh, Archie Bunker, a uh, Debbie Manuel. Archie Bunker, great guy, a uh, bit of a redneck, you know, uh, but that wasn't the name of his show. What was the name of that show? Um, Tracy Dunlop is guessing MASH. Yes, MASH, 11 years. 11 years. Alan Alda went from black hair to gray hair on the show, I think, or he was hiding it towards the end. I'm sure he was hiding it. Uh, MASH uh, was one up there. Uh, Gunsmoke, uh, Richard C., not a comedy. Uh, sorry. Uh, it might have been funny when the bad guy got shot by the guy, you know, but it wasn't a sitcom. So I can't count that one. Uh, Robert Brent, Simpsons, we got it. Debbie Manuel, cheers with Ted Danson. Yeah, cheers. Ran 11 years. And uh, the folks on Cheers aged as well. Uh, Ted Danson's uh, uh, piece, uh, his hair piece, uh, was really needed in the end. Uh, great guy, though. Great actor. Uh, Golden Girls. Tracy Dunlop is thinking about the Golden Girls. Um, I'm going to look for this. Uh, did they run that show long enough? They did not. They didn't run it past nine years. They didn't get to nine years, so they're not in the list. Uh, cheers from Wendy. We got it. Uh, Tom Henry Mash. We got it. Tracy Dunlop. Simpsons. We got it. Richard C. Simpsons. We got it. Brittany Lockwood. Big Bang Theory. Uh, number. They're in there. They're ten. They have ten years. They're right in the middle of the pack right now, and they're beginning to look older, aren't they? When you see a, a, a rerun of Big Bang Theory from their first couple of years and you look at them today, they're running out of stuff. <laughs> they're not – the boys aren't single anymore like the lead characters, and the, the one has a child now. I mean, this series is cooked. It's over. It's almost done for. Jim Thomas uh, Simpsons, uh, Sea Keeper, The Flintstones. No, uh, The Flintstones are not a sitcom. They're a cartoon. They're not a sitcom, and uh, I don't think the Flintstones actually ran uh, long enough, but I could be wrong on that. A Hanna-Barbera production. Uh, love that show. Debbie Manuel. South Park. Yes, number two, South Park, 20 years. Simpsons at 28, South Park at 20, second place. Um, Peter Heckema, Ozzy and Harriet. Yes. The Adventures of Ozzy and Harriet, 14 years from the 50s to the 60s. That was the record holder until these uh, cartoon shows came around. 14 years, The Adventures of Ozzy and Harriet, they aged on their show too. Uh, I Love Lucy, Sylvia Swan is guessing I Love Lucy. No, I Love Lucy was on for about six years. Didn't run past that. Uh, so, nope. Uh, but Lucy, I Love Lucy, and uh, Here's Lucy, and The Lucy Show. If you put it all together, Lucy was on TV for 20 years. But not in any one show, not any one series lasted to be on this actual list. Andy Griffith, uh, The Andy Griffith Show, Wes Morrison. Think about Andy Griffith. I don't think so. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I'm looking here. Andy Griffith is not on the uh, list to make nine years. Didn't make it nine years. He probably was on five to seven or eight, but not nine. Lassie. Peter Heckema is thinking about Lassie. No, I uh, didn't make it. Uh, Robert Brandt. What about Roseanne? Roseanne, bros. Yes, Roseanne lasted nine years on the first incarnation, lasted uh, half a season on her second incarnation, and right now she's not on the air. Uh, Robert Brandt is thinking the original. Uh or, uh, yeah, that is correct. Original Roseanne. Well done, sir. We got you. Uh, Anne Jordan is thinking Saturday Night Live. Saturday Night Live is not a sitcom. Saturday Night Live is an evening variety show, once a week kind of variety show, so it doesn't count. But I will, I will give you kudos because SNL has been on the air 40-plus years since 75, um, and so they're, uh, you know, they count, but not as a sitcom. All right. Uh, Law and Order, Peter Heckema, that, that guffaw-laced show, ha-ha show, Law and Order. 
<laughs> no. Not a sitcom, Peter. Anita Frank, Family Guy. Yes, Family Guy, 15 years. Third place overall. Here are the top four. You got the top four. Simpsons, South Park, Family Guy, The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet. How about that? But we got a bunch more to go here. Uh, let's see. Um, Lucy, I Love Lucy, didn't make it. Sorry, Jeff. Uh, Peter Heckema, Dallas. That's another sitcom. The laughs kept coming every time JR shot somebody. Sorry, Peter. No can do for you on that one. Uh, the Jackie Gleason Show. Richard C. Uh, no. Now, we're not looking at variety shows. We're looking at sitcoms. These are kind of like half-hour shows, half-hour comedy shows. Think through your childhood. Um, Jeff Sume Frazier. Yes, sir. Frazier, not 11 years. One year, um, uh, what was that? Uh, let me just double check. Uh, equal to the number of years that Cheers was on, Frazier was on as well for 11 seasons. Uh, Jim Thomas has Cheers. We already had it. Brittany Lockwood, Golden Girls. Nope, didn't make it. Uh, Jim Thomas, Married with Children. Yes. Married with Children, 11 years. Um, the star of that show, uh, is it Al Bundy? <laughs> that gentleman is still in a, a sitcom today, uh, which is not on this list, but he's been on TV a long time. We love him. Uh, let's see. Gilligan's Island. No, Seakeeper, Gilligan's Island was canceled after a fairly short run. Um, even though it was in the top 10, they canceled him. Uh, they didn't last. Uh, All in the Family, uh, Debbie Manuel. Yes, Debbie, you got it. All in the Family uh, was on the air. Um, here we are, nine years. Nine years. You got it. Just ahead of Seakeeper uh, and also Tracy. Uh, Brittany Lockwood, Doctor Who. No, that's a, a UK show, not, um, not America. Robert Brandt, Modern Family. Nope, not nine years yet or awfully close to it. It's getting there. Hogan's Heroes, Tom Henry, no, not didn't run nine years or longer. Car 54, Where Are You, didn't run nine years or longer. The Monsters, no. The Brady Bunch, no. I would think, though, that if they'd have run that show for nine or ten years, you would have had kids go from uh, 13 to 23. <laughs> no, couldn't do it. I think they lasted five or six years, and it was over. Um, Nina Frank, uh, How I Met Your Mother. How I Met your mother was that show on long enough yes nine years how i met your mother yes uh rowan and martin laughin not a sitcom that's a variety show uh but i think it only lasted four or five years uh britney lockwood i do not watch big bang theory and i can't wait for the show to come to an end <laughs> you don't watch it what do you care you don't care you don't watch it doesn't matter to you there's a zillion other channels on you know when i was a kid britney there were three channels you've got 300 what are you complaining about you got me on YouTube. You don't even need to watch television anymore. Oh, my God. Peter Heckema, Seinfeld. Yes, Seinfeld. Uh, Seinfeld lasted. Uh, where is that Seinfeld show on my thing? It lasted nine seasons. And uh, the last two were tough because Jerry was asking the crew, you still want to do this? You still want to do this? And they hung on for nine seasons. The last two years, he made his co his co-stars rich. Uh, he gave all the money, a ton of it, to them to keep doing the show because they were going to be typecast, possibly, for the rest of their lives. It didn't happen to Elaine. Uh, she did all right. George, off and on, uh, he's doing more Broadway than anything else and some Hollywood movies. And our friend Kramer got himself into trouble, and we don't hear much from Kramer nowadays, do we? Okay, who's next? Uh, Nina Frank, Franny. Uh, no, Franny isn't going to work for us, Nina. I don't know what that is. Family Matters, Peter Heckema. Family Matters, uh, yes, a nine-year run for Family Matters. Elisa playing bingo, wish me luck. Have a great night. Elisa, win a bunch of money. Get rich, please. Brittany Lockwood, Full House. Um, full House, I'm looking for Full House. Where is it? Is it on here, Full House? Uh, no, I'm not finding Full House. Uh, no, no, no. Full House did not make the cut. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Tom Henry, the middle, um, the, the, the middle years. Is that what you're thinking about? The middle years? Uh, they, they're not on here. Um, nope. Uh, the Cosby Show. Uh, no, I don't believe the Cosby Show lasted nine years. 
maybe six or seven, but not nine. Uh, Brady Bunch, no. Roseanne, we have it. Happy Days. Happy Days. Um, happy Days. Happy Days. 11 years. Happy Days was set in the 50s and lasted longer than the 50s lasted. Yeah, yeah. Towards the end, it was getting pretty bad. <laughs> their glory years were their first four or five seasons. Those are the best. After that, it went downhill. Happy Days. But they had spinoffs from Happy Days. Uh, Cosby, we've done. Brady Bunch, we've tried. Beverly Hillbillies. Yeah. The Beverly Hillbillies. Nine years they were on that show. Uh, those character actors had to have been sick and tired of that episodes after it was all said and done. Nine years wearing those blue jeans and hats and what, but they made a lot of money and they were a top rated show. Debbie Manuel, everybody loves Raymond. Bruce, everybody loves Raymond. Nine years and Raymond hung in there for nine seasons with all of his uh, dyslexia and uh, personal issues. He hung in there. Very successful show. Um, Mary Tyler. Moore, Tracy Dunlop, no. Mary Tyler Moore, about seven or eight years, did not last nine. Um, that show was so well written, so well cast. She could have done it forever had she wanted to, but she wanted a life and she got one. God bless her for that. Rob Souter just joined in, Bruce. The wife forced me to go to Costco for a Polish hot dog and ice cream. Just got back. <laughs> Welcome, Rob. Rob, we're looking for the longest running TV sitcoms in U.S. television history. Nine years or longer to make this list. Wes Morrison, Car 54, no. And Jordan, Studio 54, no. Uh, Costco Hall, uh, oh, I can't figure that out. Costco Hall, some. Peter, Peter uh, Hogan's Heroes, nope, didn't make nine years. The Office, Brittany Lockwood, yes, The Office ran nine seasons. Um JT, yay JT, Debbie Manuel said, you're here. Uh, Wes Morrison, Green Acres. I uh, don't think so. Um, nope, Green Acres did not make it nine years. Um, the Jeffersons from Robert Brent. The Jeffersons, 11 seasons, a spinoff from All in the Family. All in the Family lasted nine. The Jeffersons lasted 11 years. Very popular show. Debbie Manuel, Cosby Show, didn't make it. Barney Miller, Jim Thomas, yeah, Barney Miller ran for, uh, where am I up here? Barney Miller, I have him. I know he did it. I knows he's did, done it. Uh, Barney Miller, where are you, buddy? Barney Miller, uh, Barney Miller, he's on here. I'm certain of Barney Miller. Uh, Barney Miller. Ha, ah, can't read. I'm going over the edge, uh, losing my eyesight, getting old. Uh, where is Barney Miller? I thought he was on here. I, I swore he was on here. Um, Barney Miller, a great television show, TV, sitcom, a police station in New York. And I don't see him on here. I am uh, sorry. I don't see him on here, but I thought he was at least a nine-year guy. Uh, but I don't have Barney Miller here. Um, hmm. Well, uh, what can I say? I'm just triple, quadruple checking my list. I'm dub doubling, making sure he's not there, but I, I thought he was awful close. Uh, different Strokes. Wendy McCullough, Different Strokes. Uh, different Strokes. Different Strokes. Different Strokes. Um, where is Different Strokes? Is Different Strokes even here? Uh Nope, not on here. Sorry. Nope, nope. Uh, what do we got? Friends, we have already. Andy Griffith, we tried. Brittany Lockwood, I am much more of a crime show kind of a person. You must be. Tom Henry, 60 minutes long, but not a sitcom. That's right, not a sitcom. Vicky, uh, hey, hey, tra traveling with Bruce. Hi, everybody. Hi, Vicky. How you doing? Tom Henry, uh, yep, NCIS and LA Law and <laughs> none of those count. Peter Heckema, everyone loves Raymond, and they did for a long time. Richard C., uh, Uncle Teddy Show. In the UK, it doesn't count. Uh, sorry, facts of life. Seakeeper is thinking facts of life, and that is correct. It is a nine-year show, ran nine years. Uh, Sesame Street, not a sitcom. Barney Miller, I thought it was on there too. Walton's not a sitcom. Sylvie Swan, I don't know why. I can't think tonight. I watch all these TV shows. I watch them all, and I, they're not coming back to me. Um, I didn't love them. I didn't love them. Uh, Peter is saying <laughs> that's all. Man. I didn't love them, Peter. Uh, Brittany Lockwood, Dukes of Hazard, not a sitcom, was a one hour action show. <laughs> Plus a girl in in tight shorts. Uh, that was what, and a car, a fast car. 
not an action show. Uh, Laverne and Shirley, Wendy McCullough was wondering about Laverne and Shirley. They had a very high-end running TV show, but they did not last nine years together. Uh, they didn't make it nine years. Debbie Manuel, uh, Joni loves Chachi. Laughing out loud. Keep laughing because no way did that make the list. <laughs> Dick Van Dyke Show. No, Dick Van Dyke Show, I believe, ran five years. It was in the top ten. All the time it was running, uh, uh, Dick uh, uh, Dick Van Dyke winning winning Emmys, uh, the writers winning Emmys, and uh, Rob Reiner, the creator, pulled the pin after five years. I'm done. That's it. Don't need to do any more of these. I had a great run. Thank you very much. See you next time. And he took it off the air. Unbelievable. There was a Dick Van Dyke show, uh, uh, like a second version made in the 70s, lasted I think three years. Uh, but nowhere near number one. Did star Dick Van Dyke, by the way, but not uh, Mary Tyler Moore. Uh, Vicky uh, has Little House on the Prairie. That's not a sitcom. I hated Beverly Hillbilly, Sylvia saying, yeah, but it lasted a long time. Um, Vicky Sanford and Son is a question mark. Sanford and Son with, was that Red Buttons or whatever his name was? Uh, did that run nine years? No, it did not. Um, uh, that did not last. Uh, Adam's family did not last. Leave it to Beaver, uh, question mark. I think Leave it to Beaver, uh, if it had gone 10 or 12 years, the Beave would have gone from about 8 to 18 or 20, and that wouldn't have been any good because uh, we wouldn't want to leave it to Beaver now. Uh, he'd be all over the place. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, let's see. Mash, we've had guests. The Jetsons, no. Um, uh, Peter Heckham, a family guy, we got it. Mickey Mouse Club, not a sitcom. Barney Miller's on Antenna TV every night. I believe it. Debbie Manuel, good times. The show, good times. Did it make it for nine years? It did not. Good times did not have a good time for nine years or longer. Sorry, the various Dugar shows have no idea what that is. Mr. Ed didn't make it. Debbie Manuel, Kardashians, that's a show in itself. Mork and Mindy, no, no. Uh, you can imagine the energy that Robin Williams was spewing out of his body. There was no way he was going to make nine years doing that. He maybe made five. If that, uh, no way. My three sons, Peter Heckema, yes, my three sons, 12 years. I'm sure the eldest was in his close to his 30s by the time the show ended. Uh, that was a, a trick of television in those days. Uh, Alice, Wendy McCullough, Alice, the, the show about the gal who's the restaurant in the diner. Yes, nine years Alice was on waitressing. Her feet must have been killing her at the end of that show. Uh, Carol Burnett, that's a, a, a comedy variety show. Diagnosis Murder, not what I would call a sitcom. Father Knows Best, Peter Heckema. <clears throat> Father Knows Best, it did not last nine years. I think Dad had enough after six or seven. He knew best to end it now and stop the suffering. Vicky, a hotel show with the brothers, Daryl. You're talking about the Bob Newhart show, the second version. There was uh, the, the, the Bob Newhart show's first one. Newhart was the second one. Combine it, Bob Newhart was on for 20 years on television or 15 years, whatever it was. But neither show ran nine seasons that I can see here. Neither show ran nine years. Um, Daryl and Daryl uh, were the two brothers. <laughs> Vicky, Incredible Hulk, not a sitcom. Murphy Brown, Peter Heckema, well done. Murphy Brown, 10 years she ran that show through a couple of presidents. Uh, yay, Barney Miller was only seven years. How about that? Uh, Brittany Lockwood, new, NYP. Uh, no, not the new one. Debbie Emanuel, awesome, Wendy. Uh, Wendy McCullough, Newhart, that's one of them. Thank you, Debbie. M Wendy Singh, thank you, Wendy. Oh, I'm late. Hi, all. D&G Explorers, how you guys doing? The longest-running television sitcoms in U.S. television history. Here are the guesses you made correct. The number one show on television, 28 straight years, The Simpsons. Number two, South Park, 20 years, still on. Number three, Family Guy, 15 years. Number four, The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet, 14 years. There's a gap. I have number 13. No one's guessed it for 13 years. Number uh, the 12th year shows, My Three Sons uh, and two others. No one's guessed them yet. 11-year-old uh, or 11-year long running shows, MASH, Cheers, Happy Days, Jefferson's, Frasier, Married with Children, Two and a Half Men, and there's one still missing. Uh, Ten-year runs would be Murphy Brown, Friends, and The Big Bang Theory. You got all the ten-year shows. And now the rest were all nine years in length. These were the Beverly Hillbillies, Alice, Roseanne, Family Matters, 
All in the Family, Everybody Loves Raymond, Seinfeld, The Facts of Life, The Office, and How I Met Your Mother. Still looking for like 12 or 15 guesses. I will start giving hints shortly. Peter Heckema, Bewitched, did not last nine years. Wendy McCullough, Taxi, did not last nine years. Uh, Jer Jerome Barone, Brucey, how you been? I'm great, Jerome. How you doing? Um, let's see if I can help you out. The show that's been on 13 straight years is a cartoon sitcom. Cartoon like as in The Simpsons and South Park. Uh, based in Texas, I believe, is where the show is supposedly based. See if you can get that one. Uh, Sylvia the Monsters, no. Jim Thomas, Deb, how 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 you miss me, which um, uh, Wes Morrison, Petticoat Junction, Petticoat Junction did not last nine years either. Um, let's see here the number, the shows that lasted twelve years. There's two of them I'm looking for. Um, uh, one has to do uh, in, a, in 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 in, a, in how sunny it is in a city all the time. It's, it's sunny all the time in this one city. That's the name of the show. Big hint for you. Uh, the other show uh, is two words. Uh, the first word is American. Uh, there's a second word behind that. Any guesses? These shows have been on 12 years. Uh, let's see. Futurama. No. King of the Hill. Yes. King of the Hill. 13 years on television. Uh, I believe based in Texas. Um, Peter Heckema. Make room for daddy. Yeah. Make room for daddy. The Danny Thomas show. 11 years. In the 50s and 60s, I uh, I think I've watched a few in my time. It was before my time. I was too young to see it. Danny Thomas had a terribly successful show, but uh, too early to be on what we see now on television these days, I'm guessing. Um, here we go. Sunny in Philadelphia. Touchdown 821. Well done, buddy. It's always sunny in Philadelphia. It's been on 12 years. Um, American Dad from Brittany Lockwood. Yes. 12 years on the air. I'm looking for another show. Been on 11 years. It was on 11 years. And had um, it had a couple of guys. Uh, it had a couple of men. Here it is. Uh, two and a half men from uh, Peter Heckema and Jim Thomas. You both nailed it. Two and a half men. 11 years on. Fantastic. There's a show all about cruise shipping. Uh, now, I got to tell you, uh, I thought this was a one-hour show. And I thought this show would not be called a sitcom because it's a one-hour show. But here on this list, it ranks in there as a show that lasted nine seasons, all about being on a cruise ship. And it's our favorite show here on Traveling with Bruce. It's the love boat. Wendy's got it. The love boat. There it is. Something shiny and new. Oh, love is in the air. Can you watch me bear? I, I can you stand me singing? It's crazy. Everyone's coming in with the love boat. There you go. I knew you were all there. I knew you were waiting for me. Okay, the next one. Um, this show lasted nine years. And it's got one word. <laughs> it's all about a high school guy. It's a guy in high school, but he's not. A, he's not a student. He's part of the faculty. Uh, what would he be at high school? He's not a teacher, so he's a. Uh, uh -huh. Uh, that show lasted nine years. Another show I'm looking for was uh, shot in New York City. That was the setting. And it was shot in the evenings. This show was an evening show. Uh, two words uh, in New York. I wonder if you get I don't want to give too much away here. Uh, Love Bolo, The Amazing Boat. Fame? No. Principal? He was a principal. No. He's not a teacher. He's not a principal. One word. And uh, he's in charge of students. He gets them all sweaty, uh, but he gets them sweaty properly <laughs> without touching them. He doesn't have to touch them. He makes them sweat without touching them. He blows a whistle. Uh, substitute. I love that one. Substitute from Debbie Manuel, the hot show. No. Um, well, Night Court. Wendy McCullough, you got Night Court. Well done, darling. That was the show in the evening in New York. Welcome back, uh, Jotted. Uh, no, Substitute Fresh Prince. Coach. Coach. Here it is. Coach. That's the name of the show. He makes people sweat by blowing a whistle. He doesn't touch them. Uh, that's a whole other kind of show. All right, another show out of the New York area. The guy is royalty. He's really royalty in one of the suburbs of New York City. That's your big hint. Welcome back, Cotter is being popped up here all over the place. But no, welcome back, Cotter did not make nine years, unfortunately. Uh, something of Bel Air came up. 
Um, you're looking for the Prince of Bel Air, and I'm sorry, it did not run nine years. Will Smith wanted to make the big money in Hollywood doing movies. He got off that show after five years or so. Uh, let's see. Welcome back, Connor. Didn't make it. Coach did. Um, cool Jazz. I'm so late for trivia. Coach, uh, Cool Jazz, we've got uh, uh, two quizzes. The second last one going right now. Tell me the longest running TV sitcoms, but I'm only down to a couple of guesses. I'm looking for a guy who's in New York. He's royalty in New York in one of the suburbs of New York. It's not the Fresh Prince of Brill Air. I'm looking for royalty higher than a prince. He's even more important than the prince. Who's this guy? Um, let's see if I got I got two more behind this. I'm giving you clues here to get these nailed down. Uh, <clears throat> not the Fresh Prince. All right. Uh, the next show I'm looking for um, starred Jane Curtin, I believe. And it starred another gal. And I cannot remember her name, but there were two gals who were running the show. One was Jane Curtin. It ran for nine years. Uh, Jane Curtin did win an Emmy for this show, I believe. Uh, King of Queens. Thank you, Wendy. The King of Queens is a nine-year run on that show. Well done. I got two to go. This show had Jane Curtin in it after she did Saturday Night Live. This show ran. Uh, oh, and uh, Wendy, you've caught me. Wendy, you are right, and I am wrong. Kate and Allie is exactly correct, uh, but it's not the show I thought of. Uh, this show, she was not in the show. I apologize. What is – oh, I know who was in the show. Valerie Bertinelli was in this show. That's what made her famous. Uh, Valerie Bertinelli became famous of this show, and to this day, she's trying to get us to lose weight on television by going into some kind of Nutrisystem thing. What show did uh, Valerie Bertinelli uh, star in originally uh, as the youngest child of a family of four? I think it's a, a mother, a single mother with two girls, uh, one day at a time. Wendy, you got it as well. Well done, Wendy. I couldn't believe it. Beautiful job, Wendy. Uh, one to go. I got one show left to go. Cagney and Lacey is not on the list here. Uh, everybody's coming in one day at a time. Thank you, guys. All of you guys, you're nailing it. Okay, one show to go. This show is one word long. Nine years it ran, and it, it, uh, it is basically, I guess, in a hospital. It's a comedy in a hospital, and the name of the show uh, sort of is named after the room you're in. If you're a doctor, before you go into the operating room, you're in this room, and you're washing your hands. What's the name of the show? Those are all the clues I can give you. Uh, let's see what we got here, and I got one quiz to go after this one. Let's see who can nail this sitcom. Nine years on the air, ran probably in the 90s, early 2000s. Doctors? No. Uh, so be, good. Did you see I am on the cruise with Cruising with Wheels, January 2020? Uh, Jim Thomas House? No. ER? No. Um, Scrubs. There it is. D&G got it. Scrubs. That's the one. That's the list. I will read off the list of the longest running sitcoms. In American television history, we start at 28 years, The Simpsons, still going. 20 years, South Park, I think it's still going. Family Guy, 15 years, I think it's still going. Uh, the Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet, dead long time ago, died long time ago. 14 years on the air. 13 years, King of the Hill. 12 years, My Three Sons, and It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, and American Dad. Those were 12-year runs. These shows lasted 11 years. MASH. Cheers, The Danny Thomas Show, Happy Days, The Jeffersons, Frasier, Married with Children, Two and a Half Men. These lasted 10 years. Murphy Brown, Friends, The Big Bang Theory. These, the remaining shows, all lasted nine seasons. The Beverly Hillbillies, The Love Boat, Alice, Roseanne, Family Matters, Coach, All in the Family, Night Court, Everybody Loves Raymond, Seinfeld, The Facts of Life, The King of Queens, One Day at a Time, Scrubs, The Office, How I Met Your Mother. I found one more. I didn't run, make it off, take it off the list. There's one more show. This show was on nine years, and the guy who stars in this show is right now the host of The Price is Right on daytime television. What show am I talking about? And who were his co-stars? Do you remember any of his co-stars as well? What is the show I'm talking about? He was doing it out of Cleveland. Uh, he is the host of The Price is Right. What is the show I'm talking about? Fantasy Island from D&G Explorers, a huge sitcom. I don't think so. Uh, it wasn't that one. Um, who 
was running this show for nine years. He is now the host of The Price is Right. He's a former stand-up comedian. Who am I talking about? What's the name of this show? <laughs> Good to hear something. Drew Carey show. Tom Henry got it. D&G got it. Jim Thomas got it. Then Wendy got it. You all got it. Who were his co-stars? Do you know any of the co-stars on that show? Uh, Drew Carey. Jim Carey show. Drew Carey. Uh, Mimi. Yeah, Mimi was on that show with the eyeliner <laughs> the, or the blue eyeliner. Mimi, the colorful one. Uh, who else was on that show? Do you guys remember some of those co-stars he had? Fantastic uh, cast on that show. That's why it lasted nine years. One of his co-stars ended up with his own talk show after David Letterman had his own talk show. Uh, Don Johnson? Question mark. Uh, no. Anybody know who was on his show? Uh, one of his co-stars ended up on Whose Line Is It Anyway? The big tall fella on Whose Line Is It Anyway? He did very well for himself, too. Uh, some actors now do Whose Line Is It Anyway? That's that's right. That's right. <laughs> if any of you can get it, I will mention it. Um, I'm just thinking of uh, who the uh, talk show host was. Uh, after David Letterman on the Late Late Show, uh, or the Late Show, I guess it would be called, uh, or the Late Late Show, Jethro from the Beverly Hillbillies movie. Uh, I prefer Steve Harvey over Drew Carey. There you go. Uh, Brittany's saying. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, let's see if we come up with any of these. All right. Uh, in the meantime, I got one quiz left to go. It's a Seinfeld quiz. This is a toughie. Uh, this is a toughie. Uh, Colbert? No, not Colbert. The Scotsman, the man from Scotland. It was Drew Carey's boss, I believe, on the show. I think this gentleman was Drew Carey's boss. Uh, let's see here. I love that show. Wayne Brady is awesome on it. Yeah, Wayne is great. Uh, so is the Canadian, the bald one. Um, there are, there's three great guys on that show. I'm in. I'm. I'm in bed by then. Sylvia said, "I'm done. I'm. I'm too tired." <laughs> Okay, um, I'm coming up with the last trivia question of the night. I hope you guys have fun with this one. It's a Seinfeld trivia question from the Seinfeld TV show. Tell me the names. If you can tell me the names, the, uh, the names of fake movies that they went to go see. They went to see movies all the time on Seinfeld. Can you name any of the movies that were mentioned on Seinfeld over the nine years that they were on that show, I'm quite curious to see if any of these can be uh, brought up with. Uh, I'm trying to remember that actor on his name on the show. Um, late Craig Ferguson. Craig Ferguson, I believe, was one of the actors on that show. Brittany Lockwood is thinking space. She's thinking a movie called Ocean. Nope. Didn't have an ocean movie. Didn't have a space movie. Nope. Um, see if anybody gets any of these movies that were on the Seinfeld show. What movies did they go see? Do you remember Kramer doing the movie phone? Playing tonight. <laughs> Time. Let's see if any of, these, any of these ring a bell with you guys. Uh, blame it on the night. Nina Frank, blame it on the night is one of her guesses. Uh, yep. it's Actually, it's called Blame It on the Rain is the name of that movie. A fake movie. What fake movie? Sylvia's going. They would go to the movie theater to see a show, and sometimes they'd make it in there. Sometimes they wouldn't make it in there, and they uh, they uh, would talk about this movie they'd wanted to see all week long. They're all fake titles. None of these are real movies, and I'm wondering if you guys know any of them. Uh, Debbie Dan Jordan at Debbie Manuel. I love who lines it anyway. Peter Heckema, Rochelle Rochelle. Yes, sir. The movie Rochelle Rochelle was one of the fake movies that they uh, that they did. Uh, there were a bunch of them. Do you remember the name of the movie that they copied illegally with a camcorder? Remember the name of that one? Uh, cool Jazz, 86th Street Movie House. Uh, that's probably where they went. Uh, Peter Heckema, Prognosis Negative. Yes! Prognosis Negative is another movie that... <laughs> <laughs> go to and again larry david and jerry seinfeld would sit in the room and they'd come up with these scripts and they'd have to think about what kind of fake movie names can we come up with well how about rochelle rochelle <laughs> prognosis negative yeah how about that one uh channel peter heckman that's another one yes channel 
Oh, my goodness. The movie channel, A Means to an End, Nina Frank is coming up with. Yes, A Means to an End. Another fake movie on Seinfeld. Brittany Lockwood, Car? No. Uh, and Jordan, The Happy Dance movie. The Happy Dance? Um, no. Well, they did The Happy Dance themselves, but there wasn't a movie called The Happy Dance. Jim Thomas, good God, at least that info didn't stick in my brain. <laughs> Peter Ekema, Sack Lunch. Yes, Sack Lunch is another movie name. How did they come up with that for a movie? Sack Lunch? <laughs> Uh, Tom Henry, bye. All my phone just went dark at 5%. Hang in there, Tom. See you tomorrow. Peter Heckema, checkmate it. He's wondering. Uh, it's checkmate. Uh, no D on the end. Checkmate. Yeah, that's another one. Oh, my goodness. Uh, there's a few more to go. I'll, I'll take this for a while, and I'll take you out of your misery. Um, names of movies that uh, were on Seinfeld shows. Uh, fake names. Uh, curious if any of you can get this. Uh, this is uh, this takes some dedicated uh, Seinfeld um, imagination for sure. Uh, let's see here. Um, I'm going to try to help you guys out if I can. Um, hang on. There we go. Let's see if that works. And uh, double check. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I can do it. Um, let's see here. I'm going over here. I'm going to try this. Uh, let's see. Blimp. Peter Heckema is thinking blimp. Uh, that is correct. That's part of the title. Uh, Brittany Lockwood license or no. Uh, plane. Brittany Lockwood, no. Um, blimp. Uh, the movie is Blimp, the Hindenburg story. That is correct. Uh, correct. Absolutely right. Uh, let me just see here. Um, I'm just double checking here on my clues to see if i can help you in any way um i'm doing the best i can with a little i have here uh let's see here uh keep going keep going keep going keep going keep going keep going uh no not there uh any more coming through the couch sylvia is thinking the couch uh is there a movie called the couch um no there was no movie called the couch uh what do we got here um uh cry cry again nina frank Cry, cry again. Yes, that's another movie. Cry, cry again. Uh, Jim Thomas, good night all, and uh, thank you for a great show, Bruce. You're welcome. Uh, we finish these off here. Uh, fictional movies. Here we go. I can give you hints. I think I can give you hints to some of these shows. Uh, let's see what we can do. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, my goodness. Um, okay. Um, what do we got here? Jim Thomas says, okay, Brittany Lockwood, I just had to close out. I'm And I'm back. Same thing that happened to me earlier today. Just happened again. And Jordan retracted. All right. Um, looking for a, a couple of clues for you guys. Bend um, over, get a pen. All righty. Um, let's go with, this is one of the movies that uh, Kramer mentioned in the movie phone sequence. He was giving people the name of this movie. Uh, there are one, two, there are three of them. Um, uh, this movie um, uh, is mentioned in one of Kramer's movie phone. This one is Mr. Ross considered it a hell of a picture, but Frank Costanza got mad at him for spoiling it. And uh, we don't have anyone here on this one. Let me just see any more guesses coming. I'm losing my viewers, I'm sure, because this is pretty in-depth Seinfeld trivia. Let me check here. Uh, still hanging on with a few of you guys. Bye, uh, Tom Henry. Death Blow. Peter Heckema, Death Blow was the one they copied with the camcorder. In the theater, very well done. Um, let's see here. Uh, Jer let's see here. Uh, a video store employee recommends this film to Elaine. She opts for Weekend at Bernie's 2 instead. Anyone know what that one is? Uh, Jerry wanted to see this movie, but Kramer was too tired from a long day at work by Brent and Leland. Um, George wanted to see something else, but Susan forced him to see this Glenn Close and Sally Field movie instead. Um, Firestorm. Peter Heckema has Firestorm. That is a correct answer. I think so. Yes, it is. It's another one. Sack lunch. We've got an old lady in a coma. No, checkmate. We've got it. Um, Agent Zero is one of the movies from Kramer's movie phone sequence. Brown Eyed Girl is another one from Kramer on the uh, sequence. Uh, let's see here. Um, <laughs> 
Uh, what else have I got here? Chow Fun was another movie from the Seinfeld run, a fake movie. Uh, let's see if anyone else has any more coming in here. Ponce de Leon, Peter Ekema, yes, sir. Ponce de Leon was another fake movie. Sylvie, I'm still watching. Don't don't know any fake movie names. Still watching, though. Um, Mountain High was another fake movie they came up with. The Pain and the Yearning was another one. Oh, my gosh. Cold Fusion was another fake movie. The Muted Heart was the movie that George had to go see because Susan wanted to go see it. And the last one is The Other Side of Darkness. Peter, you got it right there. The Other Side of Darkness was the last one. Uh, just an obscure list of clues. I uh, put uh, some of you through serious paces on that one, but I thank you for uh, trying it out and uh, having fun with me on this one. Uh, it was uh, a blast tonight doing this show. Um, thanks again for watching with me tonight. Really enjoyed it. Um, the uh, the uh, uh, views are great. I really appreciate you hanging in there. We had potato growers, vodka producer, uh, exporters. We had soup Nazi soups, Seinfeld movies, and the longest running TV sitcoms. You guys did all. You did very well with all of them. Anyway, I'm on tomorrow at 5 o'clock, Wednesday, hump day tomorrow, and we'll talk cruise ship trivia then. Check out my other videos. I just did a video yesterday um, about uh, how Nor a Viking got voted cruise ship, cruise line of the year uh, yet again. Did a video about that. If you get a chance to check it out. If you get a chance to go to Amazon tonight for Prime Day, uh, Prime, uh, Prime Day, this is the last chance you might have to pick up an item there. Use my... Uh, uh, affiliate link if you like and help out the channel. I would appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. Uh, 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 feel that power. Oh, 98. I just love your channel. Keep the great work. Thank you. Debbie Manuel. Gotta go guys. Love you, Bruce. See you guys tomorrow. Great show as usual. Everyone have a wonderful evening. Thanks for joining me tonight. This is Bruce with Traveling with Bruce. Sam, thanks for watching. Uh, 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 and Jordan saying, come on over to the local and say hi. I might just do that. You guys have a great evening and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Take care for now. Bye.